Following the formation of the Rift Valley two or three million years ago, currents of water began to descend along the walls of the gigantic escarpment to form a lake. Although its greatest extension took place some 250,000 years ago, the lake still exists today and under the protection of the rift from which it received water has generated a mosaic of diverse habitats offering refuge to wildlife. Between the escarpment and the salty waters of Lake Manyara, there are thick rainforests, acacia forests, savannas and wetlands with their own particular flora and fauna. There are few places in Africa where one can find in scarcely 300 square kilometers the variety of ecosystems found in the Lake Manyara area, one of the most beautiful national parks in Tanzania. The lake, measuring 390 square kilometers, occupies 230 of the national park's 330 square kilometers. The Manyara area has a very unstable level of rainfall which varies between 250 and 1,200 millimeters per year, which causes years of intense drought followed by heavy flooding. With these fluctuations, it would be impossible to develop the jungle and rainforest bordering the lake, but Manyara receives the waters which spring forth from the base of the ridge and are filtered through the 600 meters of uneven land from the highlands of Ngorongoro. Between the lake and the reddish hillsides of the rift, there is a narrow strip of forest, which in other times was a famous hunting preserve, which personalities such as Hemingway visited to go hunting. The ground of volcanic rock allows for the passage of water running down from the walls of the rift, so that it is the underground water and not rainfall which keeps this forest wet, reminiscent of the tropical rainforest that covered the entire region in bygone days. Near the flowing waters which run through the undergrowth or in the different swampy areas dotting the forest, it is common to find monitor lizards of the Nile. This monitor lizard recharges its internal batteries by feeding on frogs, small fish and an occasional aquatic snail from the stream. The water has cooled its body down and being a cold-blooded animal, it must take a dose of sun before getting back to its normal activity and resuming the hunt. The rainforest is populated by a very high number of animal species, although the number of individual specimens of each species is lower than that found in open areas. The animals grow in the undergrowth in solitude or at the most in pairs, with the exception of the different primate species. Of the three species of monkeys that live in the park, baboons are the ones with the most highly developed social structure. 
The weaker blue monkeys take advantage of the presence of the baboons to come down from the trees, protected by the group's lookout. The development of such a strong social structure has allowed the baboons to colonize all of the Manyara's habitats, including the open grasslands, while their cousins, the blue monkeys, do not dare leave the safety of the forest. The forest is a world which is constantly in semi-darkness. The tops of the gigantic trees open like umbrellas, competing with their neighbors for the sun's rays so that the light barely reaches the ground. Without light, photosynthesis is impossible, and the dark substrate of the rainforest is, for the most part, a bed of swollen roots and dead leaves. But despite its desolate appearance, the forest floor is also replete with different forms of life. Termites feed on dead vegetable matter. They are part of the so-called ground decomposers, animals, fungi and bacteria that use dead matter and through their metabolism return it to the cycle of life. The monitor lizard has recovered its energy after several hours in the sun and wanders about in the shadow of the forest looking for invertebrates among the leaves. The dead vegetable matter is consumed by the ground decomposers and these are eaten by bigger animals. Death generates life and the cycle continues indefinitely. In the upper layers of the forest where the light shines through during the daytime hours, there is very good visibility and the animals depend on mimicry to hunt and avoid being hunted. The chameleon changes its color and is camouflaged by the surrounding environment. While not as fast as other reptiles, it uses its movements to imitate the surrounding leaves and branches and thereby get close to its prey. All of its steps are slow, but when it has an insect within its range, it uses its secret weapon, a high-speed tongue. The edges of the rainforest are frequented by herbivores, which graze on the nutritive herbs of the open land and take advantage of the safety offered by the thick underbrush in case a lion or leopard should appear nearby. Impalas are frequent in these areas between the open grasslands and the jungles. Here, in addition to food and safety, they find fresh shade to relieve the suffocating midday heat. The family of baboons has left the jungle and eats near the impalas. The union of the two groups favors both species because they combine their senses in guarding against possible predators. The trees of the rainforest conceal an infinite number of animals which are not visible to the naked eye. Camouflaged amidst the dense vegetation, the Manyara forest houses an authentic collection of Tanzanian snakes. Many of them are inoffensive to man, but some, although timid and evasive, have a mortal bite. The green mamba is one of the most venomous snakes on the entire African continent. Camouflaged among the leaves, it has found a prey. 
After capturing an insect, a trusting chameleon climbs up the leaves without mimicking the green background of the underbrush. The jungle does not permit mistakes, and this one was fatal. Although not as powerful as that of the black mamba, the venom of this mamba acts quickly. Once bitten, the chameleon has no way out, and a few minutes after the attack, it is gobbled up in the apparent tranquility of the closed undergrowth. Between the jungle and the lake, there is a belt which alternates between acacia forest and open grassland. Some groups of elephants take advantage of the pasture and the water running from the ridge of the rift to the lake itself. These animals are frequently and easily observed in the park, but the population is but a shadow of what it was in the past. It is estimated that less than a century ago, the Manyara area had seven elephants per square mile, one of the highest concentrations in all of Africa. The fame of the land of the elephants extended beyond the border of Tanzania, and the poachers bore down upon it like a biblical plague. Only with the creation of the park were the elephants of Manyara saved from total extinction. Even today, they fall under the fire of farmers cultivating the peripheral area of the park when they abandon their protected area and wander into the sown fields to feed. Rainfall in the Manyara area is very unstable. In years when there is heavy rain, the lake covers two-thirds of the national park, but when there is drought, the water recedes to the point where it almost disappears. The banks usually covered by water have no vegetation because of the layer of salt formed on the ground by the lake's water. But between the flooded area and the forest of acacias, there is an open grassland where herbivores and an infinite number of birds find abundant food. In the middle of the grassland, a palm vulture has found a dead wildebeest. It is part of the savannah's housekeeping team, although this is the least numerous of all the area's different vulture species. A short distance away, a group of ground hornbills approaches and searches for food among the herbs. With their powerful and precise beak, the ground hornbills eat seeds, snails, insects, and small reptiles which they find along their way. A young hornbill with still a mature colouring is beginning to manage by itself. Its parent gives it a bite, but acquiring the expertise of an adult with such an enormous beak requires a lot of practice. The arrival of eagles and marabou alongside the body of the wildebeest creates some tension. The vulture has made room for the largest and most powerful marabou, 
and they have just devoured the piece with their long conic beaks. Different rivers flowing down the Rifts escarpment dump their waters into the Manada Lake, producing flooded areas at the mouth where aquatic fowl congregate in search of food. Some 380 species have been counted in the national park, the majority of which can be seen in the vicinity of these flooded areas. Just before reaching the lake, the Simba River forms a natural pool where a group of hippopotami live permanently. The place, known as the Hippo Pool, shelters the great animals during the hottest hours of the day. Despite their size and strength, the hippopotami's skin is very sensitive to the sun's rays, and so they protect themselves by spending the day submerged in water. The hippo's head is adapted for immersion. Its eyes are periscopic, its movable ears and its nose are located on the top of its head so that the animal can stay underwater with its fine senses alert on the outside. The hippopotami's squat bodies are also prepared for amphibious life. Their legs are short and compact finished off with toes equipped with membranes between each toe to support the heavy body on land and fold up in an orderly fashion when the animal rests. The mouth on its flat face is designed for grazing in open fields with the assistance of the herbivore's strong molars. However, the striking incisors and canine teeth play an exclusively social role in connection with the ritualized fights that determine all relationships within the group. Near the hippo pool in the waters of the Mazaza River, pelicans and yellow-beaked storks meet on a daily basis to fish and clean their plumage. In Manyara Lake, there are two different species of pelicans, the white pelican, which is larger, and the gray pelican with the pink back, somewhat smaller, but equally boisterous. Pelicans are extremely gregarious animals. They live in groups and all of their movements, whether flying, fishing or grooming their feathers, seem to be marked by a guiding force that makes them move in unison. Pelicans live in communities and build their nests in brooding colonies. While grey pelicans can nest on the ground near the riverbeds, the white pelicans always build their nests high up in the trees, which are located here in Manyara, near the rivers that bathe the rainforest. Despite being one of the largest flying birds in the world, with a wingspan of almost 3 meters and weighing nearly 14 kilograms, Pelicans are extraordinary flyers, thanks to the multitude of aerial sacs on their bodies and the size of their wings. In Manyata Lake, they are one of the main attractions for ornithologists from all over the world, who come to enjoy their ablutions in the river and their evening flights rising with the thermal currents over the walls of the rift.
The saltpeter-laden riverbanks are the meeting place of flamingos, ibis, marabou, storks and yellow-beaked storks forming noisy colonies near the water. The late hours of the afternoon, when the sun begins its descent and the air gets a bit cooler, mark the beginning of activity in the parks, rivers and ponds. The hippopotami, which will come out of the water at sunset to eat reeds near the hippo pool, leave their placid rest behind to become immersed in peaceful social rivalry. Hippopotami can open their mouths to 150 degree angles, and it is by comparing their powerful open jaws that they delimit their hierarchical position in the group without the need for dangerous fights between opponents. The system is quite simple. The one with the largest mouth is the winner, and the loser, submissive, looks for another opponent against whom to measure its jaws. It seems that hippopotami recognize one another through their sense of smell and the odor of their excrement determines whether there'll be a reconciliation or confrontation between them. The excrement of the dominant male is more persistent with a long-lasting odor marking the territory and the members of the group with its dung. Even the other males must receive the smelly bath or suffer the wrath of the group leader. So it is that the showers of excrement which take place in the water are followed by a friendly encounter or a furious battle, which, when it occurs, usually ends in tragedy for one of the opponents. This dung dictatorship favors the group by avoiding bloody fights. The hierarchical structure is determined by comparing jaws, and life in the hippo pool goes along without serious problems among these colossal mammals weighing more than 3,000 kilos. The name Manyara comes from an indigenous word. The Maasai use the word Manyara to refer to an euphorbia with which they raise palisades to protect their livestock. It is a harder and more resistant plant than any other hawthorn they use in their cattle pens and protects the livestock contained inside better than any other. In the same way, the Manyara National Park protects a mosaic of ecosystems which represent the biological diversity of Tanzania and give shelter to the animal species living there. Today, this former hunting preserve has become an inviolable refuge for the animal species, which not long ago attracted hunters from all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> 